these are higher level activities, milestones as we call them, and then what remains. So uh, as Mike has talked through, uh, there's a great deal of testing happening right now towards getting us in a position to do the hot functional testing. Um, during that hot functional testing, the uh, NRC will come in with the operational readiness assessment team. Uh, through that testing, once we complete it, we'll do the containment integrated leak rate test, uh, emergency safeguards testing, and then finally, uh, in between there, we would issue a ready for fuel load uh, letter such that we would be requesting the operating license. And through the balance of the year, it would be essentially power ascension testing and, um, and convincing ourselves that we are uh, running the unit well and uh, in a predictable way, safe and reliable. And all, you can see on the, uh, the depiction that commercial operations is currently slated out uh, towards the end of the year. With the money that we use uh, to complete the plant, but our goal here is to make sure that when we finish uh, the project that we have a safe, reliable, quality asset. And so that's our goal. <laughs> we plan to do that as effectively and efficiently as we can. And we plan to uh, support Sure that we meet all regulations associated with our nuclear power plant. We do appreciate the opportunity to be here and your questions. And that's all we have. Anybody? Construction of Unit 2 in the mid 1980s, TVA decided in 2007 to resume construction and announced their plans to finish Unit 2. Since that time, the NRC staff has expended a tremendous amount of effort to ensure our review is thorough and is of high quality given the unique history of the site. We developed a customized regulatory framework, established policies and requirements for documenting the reviews and the inspections. The NRC staff is in the final stages of completing the safety review of the final design of the plan, verifying the safety of construction and completing the inspections of testing and operations. The staff has also conducted reviews and inspections related to emergency preparedness and security aspects to ensure the site is ready to operate two units safely and securely. The NRC staff documented its environmental review of Watts Bar Unit 2 in a supplement to the final environmental impact statement. The NRC staff reviewed the potential radiological impacts of normal operation of Watts Bar Unit 2, and these impacts are contained in Section 4.6 of the final environmental statement, Supplement 2, which was issued in May of 2013. Based on its review of the estimated radioactive effluence and direct radiation from Watts Bar Unit 2 and radioactive emissions from the operations of Watts Bar Unit 1, and this includes the production of trigger, the NRC staff concluded that the doses would be within the NRC dose limits and the impacts would be small. As you know, uh, late last year, um, the NRC issued its continued storage rule after a two-year uh, effort uh, to address concerns raised by the uh, District Court of D.C. relative to our, our NEPA uh, associated with waste confidence. So this continued uh, storage rule is now in effect and was issued after this supplement was issued. So the NRC will incorporate the impacts of this rulemaking into the environmental findings for Watts Bar 2 in the near future. The NRC staff documented its latest safety review for Watts Bar 2 in Supplemental Safety Evaluation Report 27, which was issued in January of 2015. This was the seventh supplement to the safety evaluation since the project we started in 2007. We expect two more supplements to be issued. The next supplement, which will be number 28, will capture the closure of many of the significant remaining licensing items. And the final um, Supplemental Safety Evaluation Report 29 will be issued concurrently if and when the operating license is issued. Earlier, you noted the Advisory Committee on Reactor Safeguards that provided its recommendation to the Commission. This committee is an advisory body to the NRC's Commission, which consists of individuals from academia, industry, and the technical community who advise the Commission on matters regarding licensing of nuclear power plants. The ACRS performed a detailed technical review of how the staff evaluates the application, and on February 12th, the ACRS endorsed the licensing of Unit 2 in a letter to the Commission. They concluded that there is reasonable assurance that Watts Bar Unit 2 can operate without undue risk to the health and safety of the public and that the operating license should be approved following completion of remaining inspections and licensing open items. I feel comfortable in providing the Commission that letter until I had another opportunity to visit the site, which I've been able to do this week and be able to walk around the plant firsthand with Victor and his staff, as well as have a chance to meet and talk with you about open issues that exist. 
So we expect to uh, send that paper up to the commission in the next several weeks, and it may take several months for the commission to, to weigh in on that. They have a very busy docket, a lot of things in front of them, um, but uh, ultimately uh, we'll hope that they'll be able to provide me the authority to, to do that so it will be in the right place in the organization. Uh, next slide, please. So we're closing remarks time. Uh, in the meeting, Mike, I want to offer you or your team if you have any closing remarks you'd like to make. Vic, anything you want to close? Okay, so um, just to reiterate, tremendous amount of work has been done by both TBA and the NRC to get to this point where we're having this kind of dialogue. In football terminology, I would say that we're in the red zone. But as everybody knows, it follows football. That's where the going gets the toughest. Both organizations have to continue with strong focus on the safe construction of Watts Bar 2 so that the NRC can be in the best informed position it can be to make a decision on a future operating license request. Uh, next page, please. So we're going to move into the question and answer phase. And, and Jeannie had noted we're going to go to 7.30. So since this meeting took a little bit longer than we thought, um, we'll take questions and answers till 8 o'clock. And, and then as Jeannie noted, uh, we're going to hang around till 8.30 to answer questions that others may want to ask us after the uh, formal Q&A portion. Um, we hope, uh, let's see. <coughs> I think that's probably about it. We're going to take a really, just a short break of just a couple of us. We want to rearrange the front of the room and get more of the NRC staff up here. So if you just indulge us for a couple of minutes, um, we'll get the room rearranged and we'll start the Q&A. Sure, but we transition and have a